I'm Tucker Carlson in tonight for Sean. For the very latest on this tense and volatile situation in Iraq, we turn to our own Catherine Herridge, who was standing by. Catherine, what's going on? Well, thank you, Tucker. While military officials here in Washington are putting the best possible face on the incursion, this is the first time a limited number of ISIS fighters have penetrated the base perimeter, and today we learned that they use stolen uniforms as a disguise. Early indications are that, yes, uh, uh, some of them did uh, detonate their their vests detonate themselves. Um, uh, and then they, they were followed by uh, roughly something on, on the order of 15 or so other fighters. Um, it does appear now that um, uh, most, if not all of them, were wearing uh, Iraqi uniforms. But a former intelligence officer who was stationed at al-Assad in 2006 tells Fox News, the base is gigantic and the terrain offers no natural defenses. And the idea that 320 Marines can hold the 13-mile perimeter 24-7 and at the same time train the Iraqi military is simply not credible. This morning, one of the most authoritative voices on the threat, the former head of the Defense Intelligence Agency, General Michael Flynn, testified that the threat has expanded in every possible way in the last year and the administration has not done enough to stop it. I have the unhappy task of informing you that according to every metric of significance, Islamic extremism has grown over the last year. And another witness testified that ISIS is now gaining a foothold in Libya, which is awash with weapons, many reportedly dumped in the region by Qatar, that is described by the administration as an ally. You are seeing uh, the emergence of uh, what looks like an Islamic State affiliate in Libya. Uh, it's a completely ungoverned space, and uh, complete. It, it's now a civil war, total polarization, and that's having destabilizing effects on both East and West. And Flynn warned these so-called U.S. allies that support terrorism and dump weapons into the region have to be reined in and counseled as part of a larger effort to bring the Arab nations together in a body that offers collective defense, something similar to what we have with NATO, Tucker. Catherine Herridge, thanks a lot for that. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. What a disaster. Also tonight, the New York Times reporting that the Obama administration enhancing a, quote, secret war against al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. Fox News' James Rosen is standing by with details on that. James? Tucker, good evening from the Pentagon, where publicly officials wouldn't comment on what they are categorizing as intelligence matters. Privately, however, on background, a senior U.S. defense official has confirmed to Fox News, as first reported by the New York Times, that U.S. special ops forces and Afghan commandos conducting a joint counterterrorism raid in the mountainous terrain between Afghanistan and Pakistan last fall killed an al-Qaeda leader named Abu Bara al-Kuwaiti and seized a laptop computer with what the source calls significant intelligence about al-Qaeda planning and operations stored inside of it. However, our source disputed the Times account in one respect. While there has indeed been an uptick in nighttime raids in Afghanistan with U.S. personnel participating, such upticks, the source said, are cyclical and not the result of the intel gleaned from that laptop. Asked about the Times report today, a Pentagon spokesman declined to comment, citing the inviolability of intelligence information. But he did speak in general terms about the counterterrorism mission. It is a fact that as we conduct operations, be they counterterrorism operations or otherwise, uh, that, uh, that we try to assess and evaluate whatever resources and information might come, aco come across battlefield operations. And that, that's just a fact. We do that. Um, and sometimes when we do that, uh, we gain insight and information that could lead to follow-on operations. Admiral Kirby also confirmed that, as has been widely reported, an interagency group across the U.S. government is considering changes to the president's timetable for the withdrawal of all the remaining U.S. troops from Afghanistan. But, Kirby added, no decision has yet been made. Tucker.